President Obama and his stunning decision to put what appeared to be an imminent attack against Syria on hold. Now the president looking to Congress to approve military action after Britain, a key U.S. ally, backed out. Now this delays any action against the Assad regime for using chemical weapons for more than a week. That's because Congress is out of session until September 9th. Our George Stephanopoulos is here with his analysis. But we do begin with ABC News Chief White House Correspondent Jonathan Carl from the White House. Quite a surprising turn of events, John. Oh, absolutely, Bianca. And although the president has told the world he believes the United States should launch a military attack against Syria, he also made it clear he is not ready to act alone. The president made an impassioned case that the Syrian government must be punished for using chemical weapons. I have decided that the United States should take military action against Syrian regime targets. This would not be an open-ended intervention. But I'm confident we can hold the Assad regime accountable for their use of chemical weapons, deter this kind of behavior, and degrade their capacity to carry it out. But he isn't ready to launch an attack just yet. First, he wants to get a green light from Congress. While I believe I have the authority to carry out this military action without specific congressional authorization, I know that the country will be stronger if we take this course and our actions will be even more effective. The move will almost certainly delay military action by two weeks or even more, but the president said he has time. Our capacity to execute this mission is not time sensitive. It will be effective tomorrow or next week or one month from now. And I'm prepared to give that order. It was the president who more than a year ago warned Syria. A red line for us is we start seeing a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around or being utilized. Now that they've done it, he says America must act. We do what we say, and we lead with the belief that right makes might, not the other way around. The president will also attempt to build international support for this action, beginning with his trip to Russia this week where for a meeting, a summit meeting of world leaders, including several who are adamantly opposed to a military strike against Syria. Dan? And that includes the president of Russia, which should be uh, an interesting interaction, no question. John Carl, thank you for your reporting this morning. So now the action moves from the White House to Capitol Hill, where the administration is going to launch an all-out lobbying campaign and where lawmakers have already started to grapple with what will be a a major decision. ABC News senior Washington correspondent Jeff Zeleny is at the Capitol. Jeff, good morning. Go walk us through the order of operations here. When does the debate start? Uh, good morning, Dan. The debate is not going to start officially until next week. Congress is still on its week-long uh, recess, finishing up this summer break. So the votes will start next week, but the real work is starting right now. There's a classified briefing on the Hill this afternoon. The Senate Foreign Relations Committee begins taking some of those witness testimony on Tuesday. So this is the critical week that the White House has to explain its position, make its case to Congress. Right now, I'm told by senior officials on both sides of the Capitol, the votes are not there yet. So the White House has work to do uh, over this next week. Yeah. What's your sense about whether this thing will ultimately pass, though? I mean, everybody was surprised, the whole world was, when the British Parliament voted against this. What are the odds uh, here in the U.S. Congress? The odds of the U.S. Congress are right now, if this vote was taken today, I'm told by uh, lawmakers on both sides, it would not pass. But as always, when these things get closer to the end, things can change. But if it were to pass, it will have to be an unusual alliances of Democrats and Republicans. Some libertarians and liberals are very opposed to this action right now. So it's threading a very difficult needle for this White House, Dan. A huge gamble for this White House. Jeff Zeleny on the Capitol this morning. Thank you. For more on all of this, let's bring in George Stephanopoulos, who, as you know, is the host of this week. George, good hey morning. Guys. Let me put up a question as I ask you. Uh, we put up a picture as I ask you uh, the first question here. This is a picture of the Situation Room for Friday night. It's the president and his national security team. Look at the faces. Everybody so grim as they go ahead and make this decision. So as we look at this, let me ask you, if the votes go against them in Congress, are they likely to act against Syria anyway? Well, remember, if, if the votes go against the president, he would be the first president in modern times to lose a vote on military force. That was exactly the question that President Obama ignored uh, when he left the Rose Garden yesterday. That was the question being shouted out. I'm going to ask Secretary of State Kerry this morning. I don't see how they have a choice. Even if they lose, the president, given what he said about the scale of the crime, a crime against humanity, 
he called it. He will have to act, but he will be doing it if they lose without congressional authorization, of course. The bet the White House, the bet the president is making is that this is going to pass and that that will strengthen his hand. And why not call Congress back sooner? And the bigger question, did the president box himself in by setting that, drawing that red line when it comes to chemical weapons? That is the big question. If you look a year ago, a lot of people were surprised when the president drew that red line. On the other hand, when you look at the scale of this attack, it would have been hard to ignore. Uh, anyway, I talked to White House officials about why the president didn't call them back earlier. He said that is their decision. And remember, one of the other things the president said yesterday is that the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Martin Dempsey, has told him that it doesn't matter, that whenever he gives the order, they will be able to carry out the mission. So a couple of weeks doesn't matter. Interesting to see if that holds. George Stephanopoulos, thank you. And George is going to have a huge show this morning. He'll be all over this story coming up on this week. He will, as he said, be going one-on-one -on -one with the Secretary of State, John Kerry. George, thanks again.